Parshas Yisro. Uh, the title is Parents Never Let Go. Now, <laughs> you're probably wondering, what does this have to do with Parshas Yisro? So I'll tell you. It's the first of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not let go of your children. <laughs> is that the first of the Ten Commandments? You'll see, it actually is. Um, the Torah says, Anochi Hashem Elokecha, I am the Lord your God. Now, just from that very first word, Anochi, Anochi is an unusual word. Because how do you normally say I in Hebrew? Ani. Ani. Where does that letter chaf come from? Anochi. How does, when do we say Anochi? And when do we say Ani? So I'm going to tell you a rule that the Malbim presents to us on this, on this portion. He says it in a number of places in his... Tanakh commentary, and you'll have this. This, I believe, is emet la amito. This is absolute truth. The difference between ani and anochi. Malbim says as follows: He says, "V'yesh hevdel ben ani uven anochi. Shebemilas ani medayek et hanaso, uvemilat anochi medayek et hanose." What does that mean? How do you, How would you translate that? Anyone? Subject and object. Subject and object. He says, when you use the word ani, you're emphasizing the object, and when you are you when you use the word anochi, you emphasize the subject. So it'll give us some examples to, to be able to clarify this. Lemashal, ani omed, wrote Salomar lo yoshev. So when a person says ani omed. Ani omeid, I am standing. Then the emphasis is on the action, the subject, uh, the object, the object, and not the subject. I'm not sure if subject and object are actually the best way to describe it, but the person versus the action. The person versus the action is really what he means to say. So when you say ani omeid, it means I'm standing, meaning I'm standing in contradistinction to some other activity that I could be doing, like sitting. I'm standing, I'm not sitting. But Anochi Omeid, wrote Salomar, Anochi Lo Ishacher. But when you say Anochi Omeid, you're saying, I'm standing. That guy's not standing, I'm standing. So are you emphasizing the I, or are you emphasizing the action that is being performed by the I? Ani Omeid, or Anochi Omeid. That's the difference between the two. What's the emphasis in the sentence? Al Mashakasuv, Ayin Mashakasuv Parshas told us Al Anochi Esav Bichorecha. So he says, and I refer you to a further discussion of this when you look at Yaakov's response to to Yitzchak when Yitzchak said, "Who is it?" And what did Yaakov say? Anochi, it's me, Esav Bichorecha. Esav is your firstborn. So the emphasis on Anochi was where Yaakov was trying to explain, I am the one who is your firstborn. It is really not Esau. If he would have said, Ani Esau b'chorecha, it would have been more of a lie, because the emphasis would have been on the identification of the person. But when he was trying to say, Anochi, he was identifying who he was. I am the, that firstborn that you identify with Esau. So now let's go to our Pasuk of Anochi Hashem Elokecha. There's a pasuk in, uh, in Parshas Lech Lecha where Hashem says to Avram, he says, I am Hashem, and he uses the word Ani, I am Hashem who has taken you out of Or Kasdim. So Hashem was really introducing himself to Avram by telling him, this is my name, my name is Yud Kei Vav Kei. Because Avram had never really understood the being that he was interfacing with, or at least not the name of the being that he was interfacing with. So Hashem says, Ani Hashem. The emphasis is on Hashem. I am Hashem. That's the emphasis. Aval keshomer po anochi Hashem, perush rak anochi havaya lo acher. But when God now is introducing himself to the Jewish people with the Ten Commandments, introductions of God are no longer necessary. The Jewish people have seen Hashem already through the Ten Plagues, 
through the Mesora that they have from their others, from their ancestors. But what Hashem is saying is that I am Hashem. There's no one else here. Only I am Hashem. That's what the import of Anochi is. And that's what he's trying to indicate. There is no other God. And that's why the natural progression from Anochi Hashem Elokecha is Lo lecha Elohim acherim al panai. You may not have foreign gods. He says, when, he, when Hashem says I, that I took you out from Egypt, meaning that Hashem has says, says, you know where you learned that it is I that I'm Hashem, your God? He says, you learned it from being taken out of Eretz Mitzrayim. Mitziut Hashem al yedei sidrei makot ditzach. He says, you learned it through the last three plagues. Kamosha Kasuf, Bezos, Teda, Ki, Ani, Hashem. Uva Hashkacha, Veha Hashkacha, Yedei Seder, Adash, Kamosha Kasuf, Ani, Hashem, Bekerf, Aretz. V'shein Kamohu, Nodal, Yedei Seder, Ba'achav, Kamosha Kasuf, V'man, Teda, Ki, Kamani, B'chol, Aretz, Kamosha Kasuf, B'firush, Eisham. The ten plagues sort of gave you the totality of a knowledge of God, that I, Hashem, am in control of everything. That there is that... Um, that, that I am the Lord, that I exist, that I am providential, and that there is no one else other than me. And that's why Hashem finishes by saying that I am the Shem who took you out of Mitzrayim, and therefore you got to know who I am, including the fact that there is no other God before, uh, other than me. And also, because I took you out of the house of slaves, you have to indenture yourselves to me and enslave yourselves, so to speak, to me for having redeemed you from slavery. So, in the Malbim's explanation, it becomes clear that that's what Anochi means. Anochi means, I am Hashem, no other gods. Now, I just want to um, point out that Using, it, using the term anochi this way, that anochi emphasizes the I. Ani emphasizes what comes after the I. There's, what do you call egotism in Hebrew? Anochiut. Anochiut, even in modern Hebrew, is too much emphasis on the anochi, on the I. Now let's take a look. Now that we've gotten the correct definition of what Anochi means, let's take a look at the Zohar. The Zohar tells us a very cryptic statement. It says, Anochi Hashem Elokecha, Anochi Kema Detaninan. This is consonant with what our sages tell us, Bas Haisalo Le'avram Avinu that Avram Avinu had a daughter. He Shechinta, Veda Bat. This refers to the Shekhinah. And as we all know, the Shekhinah is the feminine manifestation of God. Veda Bat. And this is the daughter that is referred to in the daughter that Avram Avinu had. Now, the Zohar, as you've probably discovered over the times that you've been exposed to these passages of the Zohar, is generally cryptic, a cryptic text which needs to be deciphered. It's deliberately cryptic. It's not meant to be self-apparent, because if it was, it wouldn't be called Kabbalah. It wouldn't be called Sisrei Torah. It wouldn't be called the hidden manifestations of Torah. It's meant to be cryptic, and it's really, therefore, the the objective of the student to try and unravel some message that is encased within this cryptic statement. What does it mean that from this word Anochi we learn that Avraham had a daughter? First of all, what the Zohar is making reference to is a medrash which is quoted by Rashi. The Torah says in Parshas Chaye Sarah, Avraham Zaken Ba Bayamim, Ba Hashem Berachet Avraham Bakol, that Avraham was elderly coming along in days, and Hashem blessed Avraham with bakol, with everything. So there's a dispute among the sages. Some say that Avraham was blessed and that he didn't have a daughter. 
Others say that he was blessed and that he had a daughter. And we've, we've talked about this in the past. But the Zohar subscribes to the opinion in Chazal that says that he had a daughter, and that was part of the blessing of Bakol, because in order to be able to fulfill the mitzvah of Pru or Vu, you need to have a son and a daughter. In order to be able to have a comprehensive sense of I've left over progeny that can continue on my work, a son and a daughter is really necessary. Okay? But what does it have to do with the word Anochi? If Anochi is the emphasis on I. It's very difficult to understand, and I, and I don't claim to have the full picture on what the Zohar means. And I don't think um, that we'll be able to capture the full meaning in today's short Devar Torah. But I wanted to present to you a small paragraph from a much larger essay that appears in the Sefer Sod Yesharim. Sod Yesharim is one of my favorite, sfar, favorite set of Sfarim, I should say. It was composed by um, our Rav Gershon Henech Leiner, who was the Radziner Rebbe, who lives at the end of the 19th century and is part of the Ishbitz dynasty of Hasidus, which has a certain outlook, a certain very philosophical view of the world, something which I personally find very appealing, very Kabbalistic in the one sense, but also very philosophical in the other sense. And the Radziner writes, trying to explain the word Anochi. He first, and this is not something that you have in front of you, tells us that the letter Chaf in Anochi is like the word, is like when you find the letter Chaf as a preposition. Like when Hashem, when Hashem said, Kachatzot Alayla, with the letter Chaf, it means approximately at midnight. So Anochi is an approximation of God because the Jewish people can never have a full grasp of Hashem. So that's what the letter Chaf in Anochi, when you add it to the word Ani, you, uh, Anochi. It's more of an approximation that we'll never be able to fully grasp Hashem. But then he goes a little bit deeper, and he says like this, V'inyano, I hope you can read the text, Ki Hashem Yisbarach Nasan Torah li Yisrael, that Hashem gave the Torah to Israel. V'nikra Nasan Lanu Es Torah So. So we, 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 we affirm this in the blessing that we make every morning, Asher Nasan Lanu Torah Semes. That God gave us a living, a, a, a true Torah. V'nikra no sein ha-Torah. That we, we call God the giver of Torah. V'hainu shahalevush nasan Hashem yizbarach beramach mitzvot asei v'shasa mitzvot lo ta'asei. But really, what did God give us? He gave us the adornment, the clothing of the Torah. Which means the Torah, as a document, has an inf infinite depth to it. The superficial facade of Torah is the bodily commandments that we're supposed to fulfill. The 248 positive mitzvahs, the 365 mitzvahs losas, the negative commandments, the chol of Torah kula, and all of the accoutrements that represent the facade of the Torah. But what we have to appreciate is that normally when you call a person a no saying, if I give you a cup of coffee, so I no longer have any possession of it, I give it, means it's, I had it at one time, I give it to you, and now it's yours. It's not mine anymore. I have no connection to it anymore. But he says that's not what's meant when we call God the no saying of the Torah. The no saying that we refer to as when God gives us the Torah is different from other, any other kind of no saying. Verakshin is Daveg in Israel, Sheyiru al Yedei ha Torah bechol Esu bechol Uvzman, Shehem Srechim la Hashem is Barach Sheyair lahem. When God gave us the Torah, He gave it to us as a way for us to recognize that we still need him, that we still need him. And when you think about it, the Torah as a standalone document is completely insufficient. It has so much mystery about it. It is shrouded in mystery, just the text of the Torah. And that without Hashem's illumination, without his aid, 
to help us understand it without it being an ongoing conversation, as it were, with the Ribbonu Shalolam, there would be no way for us to completely embrace the Torah in its fullness, in its totality. Because all we really have is the surface of the Torah, the clothing of the Torah. We don't have the greater depths without Hashem helping us to be able to find that greater depth within it. Ki ani moreh sh'ani muvdal u'metzave oscha kifi devarai u'fekidasi shelo ta'amik bo v'lo tosif alav. He says that's why there's a differentiation between Ani Hashem and Anochi Hashem. If the Torah would have said Ani Hashem, that would imply that I, Hashem, am separating myself when I give you the Torah. Here, guys, it's yours. I'm passing it off to you. It's yours. Zai gesund. Be well. Have a nice day. However, he says, Ve Anochi Hainu, ki Anochi hu sha'ata tavin. Masha Anochi Meir Lach. But when I use the word Anochi, it means that I am front and center, says Hashem. I am still part of this gift. Anochi means focus your attention on me when you accept this Torah. I'm not giving it away to you and telling you that you can forsake me now because you have the Torah. I'm telling you that I'm still part of whatever equation that you are going to have in living your life and trying to understand the Torah. Umemela. And therefore, Kevin Shalonifsak or Ben Yisrael la Avim Shabashamayim. Therefore, because there's still this Anochi that connects me to you through the Torah, he says, there's still that that light that connects us, says Hashem. The Yesh Tikvat Chuta Chibur Hamechaber Otam. And there still therefore is that thread of hope that connects and binds us together. As the Zohar says, Kudshabrichu or Oraisa Mashcha Yisrael Desula, that the HaKadosh Baruch Hu has a light of Torah which acts as a tether that binds the Jewish people to God. Uvitikunim and in the Tikkun HaZohar, which is another passage of Zohar, Yisrael inein pesula Oraisa Mashcha Shechinta Shar. Again, implying the same idea. And that is what's meant by the Zohar, that the Torah, when Hashem gives us the Torah, it is like God giving us the semblance of the Torah, which is the daughter, that God has a daughter, or Avraham has a daughter. And so I'm going to tell you what I think it means. What I think it means, using the Malbim as our sort of looking at the pshat that the Malbim has told us. If Anochi means that the emphasis is an I am the Lord your God, it means that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is saying, I'm not letting go of you. I am not releasing you on your own recognizance just because I've given you a Torah. The Torah cannot stand alone as something that you can take and now formulate law and do everything on your own. It's true that we say lo bashamayim hi. The halachic system cannot be dictated by Hashem. But if you truly want to understand the greatest depths of Torah, you have to be reliant on siyata dishmayim. You have to acknowledge the fact that, that there's a divine light that is always shining from heaven, and I need, in order to truly tap into the greatest depths of Torah understanding and Torah study and really feel that sense of illumination that comes from the Torah, I have to go back to the source and really say, Hashem, I know that you're part of this system. You've never let go of the Torah. Now, our sages tell us that when Moshe uh, was uh, breaking the tablets, Hashem held on to one end and Moshe held on to the other end. It's because that imagery that Moshe had to fully you know, pull away the luchos from Hashem's hands before breaking them is that imagery that is being conveyed to us by this statement. So why is it called Avram having a daughter? It's because, really, the way I'm understanding it is that God treats the Torah like his daughter. The Torah is Hashem's daughter. And we can talk about it in manifestations of Shekhinah, which is what the, what the Torah represents, the Shekhinah. 
when, if you have a daughter, you're extremely protective of that daughter, even after she becomes an adult, even after she gets married, even after she has children. She's always your little girl, and you always, she always needs you to keep an eye on her. Boys can break free of the parental uh, constrictions much more easily because they're independent, they can go out there and do whatever they want. But when you have a bas, right? Bas haiseloli Avram Avinu, Avram had a daughter that he had to constantly be watchful over and protective of and make sure that that special relationship was never broken. That's what is being characterized, I think, by the Zohar. And what Hashem is basically telling us when he says, Anochi is, don't take the Torah and run away from me. Take the Torah and realize that if you want to really, really understand it completely, I'm always here as the protective father of that Torah. And therefore, you will always need me in order to be able to uh, fully plumb its depths. So that's the idea that I wanted to present for today. Any uh, questions or comments? It's negative, really? Anochi. Anochi. Right, it's set right. But it's the emphasis on me. Hashem says, don't lose sight of me when you take my Torah. I'll always be here. But it's not a negative. It's not a negative when it's uh, in reference to Hashem. Yeah, Patricia. Uh, is it fair to say that, would it be fair to say that if you're just reading the passage, uh, that Anochi is a more intimate, personal, gives a sense of more intimacy, more personal feeling? Perhaps, perhaps that's one way to rephrase it, because Anochi basically says, "Don't lose sight of who of the, the me that's standing right here in front no, of you." The, the, the presence is coming out. To the us. presence is coming out. Right. That's right. It's not just I'm releasing the Torah to you. It's a if you want to take my Torah, you got to accept me together with it. That's what the Anochi is. Okay. Have a good day, everybody.